Frank Lampard is in trouble right now. Everton are only one place above the relegation zone, meaning Frank Lampard's ten years Everton manager could be coming to an end very shortly. But on paper, Everton's team isn't bad at all. They've got England's number one keeper in Pickford. They've got Gordon on the wing. They've got Calvert Lewin, who was firing the Premier League up not long ago. But we have been given fifty-one million to try and sort this issue out with Everton. And I discovered fairly quickly that in Everton's team there was a lot of hidden gems that weren't going to get a starting eleven place this season. So I sent out Ben Godfrey and James Garner both out on loan. The one player that I did bring in was a fullback by the name of Rick Karsdorp as he is on his way out of Roma anyways and we brought him for 21.2 million. And now the team looks like this and the players in that starting 11 it was screaming for a 4-2-3-1 narrow formation. I'm going to keep Pickford as Everton's captain for this rebuild because quite frankly speaking in my opinion anyway he's been one of Everton's best players for the past couple of seasons. I'm not going to play a single game in season one either. I want to see how this team will fare on its own. Well halfway through the season the boys haven't let me down. We've gone from 17th in real life to 7th place in the Premier League. Boys, it's looking pretty damn decent. But with money still left over from the first transfer when we went and brought a brand new central defensive midfielder because Adrisa Garner Gay is definitely gaining on and he's definitely going to start declining pretty soon in overall. So we went and bought Maximilian Arnold for just over 20 million. And now the team looks like this and it's quite ironic isn't it? I brought in a right back and he gets himself freaking injured. He is out for another 3 months with a ligament injury I believe but it won't be too bad I suppose. But if we can get a top 8 finish in the first season that would be incredible well at the end of the season we definitely fell off just a little bit we've gone out of the top 10 and into the bottom half of the table we finished 11th place which in fairness for the first season is a little bit better than what they're doing in real life right now city as you would expect topped the table with 87 points with manchester united very close behind them second place with 85 points and in the bottom three it was southampton brentford and bournemouth with united winning the fa cup nope Fiorentina won the conference league with arsenal winning the europa league and manchester city won the Champions League. I mean, aside from DCL and Dwight McNeil, the rest of the players just didn't really do all that much at all. I mean, there was a lot of growth and improvement. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. But stats-wise, it was shocking. But we've had our trial season with Everton. They've done all right. Mid-table finish. We brought in two players to bolster it up a little bit. But in season two, we really start to delve into the issues that Everton has and we start to rectify them. And like I've just said, in season two, we are going to rectify all the problems that Everton have in their team. Now, starting with the front four. It's very clear that Gordon's got a lot of potential. It's quite clear that McNeil's on fire and DCL is as well. A worry on the other hand definitely isn't. So we will be looking for a central attacking midfielder at some point. Which does leave our back four. Tarkowski is going nowhere. 81 rated at 30 years old. He'll definitely do a job for another season at least. Our full backs as well are going nowhere which does leave that other centre back position. Now Godfrey is still out on loan. However, a 79 rated centre back in this team isn't acceptable. And we've been given a little bit more money to work with this season of 50 seven million pound to spend and my sole objective for that transfer winner was to get rid of all the dead wood in everton's team starting with dali alley for 14 million adrisa garner gave for just under 10 million and lastly andre gomez for 5 million and having accumulated over 25 million from those three sales i was able to bring in two very important players going forward the first one being john stones for 35 million bringing him back into everton and we also brought in jao polina from fallen for 31.1 million and now the team looks like this so there's a couple of things that I need to run through with you so obviously we have switched into a 4-4-2 holding variation purely because one striker came back from their loan move that I didn't even realize they'd gone on loan to Moyes Keane is back in Everton's team and I don't care how he does in real life this man is gold I thought bringing back John Stones was an absolute no-brainer considering how well he's been doing at Manchester City and Polina has been lighting up the Premier League at Fulham so I thought why not and with those signings this team looks so much stronger than the team that I started with last season so hopefully this team can get into the top eight. And the team I wanted to test Everton against was Leicester City. They've been doing pretty well as of late in real life and they've got a very good squad on FIFA. So let's see how we do. It was some absolutely amazing play. We take a 1-0 lead inside the first five minutes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Cavalry and surely there we go. Just like that, five minutes in. Leicester City have been torn apart and we're 1-0 up. Whilst we were 1-0 up, we dominated majority of the game and then this happened. On all the long shot. Oh my god, oh Nold with the long shot, we have been knocking on that door all freaking game after going 1-0 up, and it was going to take something special, but Jesus Christ. And in the 90th minute, Moise Keane finished Leicester City off. There we go, for the third, there we go, done and dusted, 
Moyes Keane with his first goal of the game. Boys, we have definitely leveled up since last season. That was a very convincing win. Domination from minute one to minute 90 of this match. I'm telling you now, boys, if we can keep this going all season, we are definitely looking at a top six finish. How are we doing worse this season with a far stronger team on our hands? Boys, this game doesn't make sense sometimes. I'm hoping that in the second half of this season, this Everton side can butt the freaking ideas up. And just to update you guys, the team now looks a little bit like this. We can see the improvement amongst pretty much every single player in this team, and it's only going to get better from here on out. I think it is fairly obvious where the team needs improvement, but I'm not going to say anything about that until season three. So for now, let's get to the end of the season and see how we get on. Okay, this is going to take a little longer than I thought we are at the end of the season. We've only creeped up the table by one place. That is for the team standard right now. Shocking, to be honest. The team that we've got right now, we should definitely be hitting top eight, even top six. Spurs have won the league. It's official. I don't like this rebuild. We're in the bottom three. It was QPR, Burnley and Watford. With Aston Villa in the FA Cup. Liverpool went on to win the Carabao Cup. With AC Milan winning the Conference League. Chelsea won the Europa League. Arsenal went on to win the Super Cup. And Barca this time won the Champions League. Well, it's safe to say our strikers are doing pretty decent. DCL gained 30 and 4. Gordon gained 15 and 7. Moyes Keane with 12 and 1. Cars don't be in on the action as well. I don't know whether the formation we're rocking right now is attacking enough to actually utilise how good our front four can be. I mean, Moyes Keane can play on the left wing. Would it be a good idea to shift him over onto the left and bring in McNeil as a central attacking midfielder and keep Gordon on the right? With that being said, though, that's given me a lot of thought for season three and what we can do with the team. But for now, season two, I'm considering it's a bit of a write-off and we have got, like I've just said, a lot of work to do in season three. Now, Moyes Keane will take around 100 odd weeks to convert to a left wing and quite frankly speaking, that's just a waste of his potential. So we're going to keep with this formation, but we're just going to make the team overall a little bit stronger. And to do this, we've been given £71 million to spend this season by the board. In that transfer window, we decided to bolster that defensive lineup just that little bit more by bringing in Davide Calabria for just over £34 million. And then I realised Pickford was our only keeper, so I went and brought in veteran goalkeeper Hugo Lloris for just £3 million. And now the team looks like this. We are sticking with this formation for the time being, like I've just said. There are definitely a couple of spots in this team that I would absolutely love to improve, but right now, financially, we just can't afford it. But the starting 11 looks good. The subs bench looks good. I reckon this is finally the season we break into the top six. Last team, I tested the team out against Leicester City, which turned out to be a pretty easy game. This time, I really wanted to step it up and give Everton a proper challenge. Then I changed my mind and went for Spurs. And in the opening 20 minutes of game, through a beautiful strike from Moise Keane on his left foot, we make it 1-0. Moise Keane on his left. Oh my god, Moise Keane is so goddamn good. And with a beautiful turn inside the box, Moise Keane made it 2-0. On his right. Oh, look at that. Moise Keane with the brace. Boys, Moise Keane is an absolute gold mine on this game. And through some absolutely shocking defending, Spurs got one back. No. Oh, you fucking absolute <laughs> But just like that, Moise Keane got his hat trick. Moise Keane for his third. Oh, just like that. Just like that. We make it 3-1. Moise Keane with his hat trick. Spurs are dead and buried. We have won this game. A 3-0 win over the reigning Premier League champions is something to brag about. I ain't going to lie. Moise Keane with a hat trick of goals. Boys, this team right now, this team that we've got this season, I'm sure to God they are going to get top six. I am honestly on the verge of giving up with this team. How have we got such a good team but doing so shit in the Premier League? And just to update you guys, the team looks a little bit like this. Now, can you see why I'm struggling to figure out why we're doing so badly in the Premier League? Something has to change in the second half of this season. Otherwise, I'm genuinely running out of ideas. By some absolute miracle, we picked our form up and we landed ourselves in the FA Cup final against none other than Burnley. We were never going to get a better opportunity to get some silverware, but the question was, could the boys in blue actually pull it off? And after getting so many chances, Early on in the game, we finally took advantage of one of them. Gordon, Moise Keane, 1-0. It's been coming, boys. It has been coming. We've been peppering their goal all game. Moise Keane, of course it was going to be him. And with an absolute corker of a strike from McNeil, he doubles our lead. Oh, that's McNeil. Oh, my God. 
Mick Neal on his left foot makes it 2-0 to Everton. We have been absolutely dominating Burnley from minute one. So surely to God, this game is done. And boys and girls, Everton have finally secured their first ever trophy under my management. It's about freaking time as well. Maybe this will spur the boys on just that little bit more to want to win trophies like this. And Jordan Pickford as captain lifts the FA Cup trophy. Hopefully it's one of many. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's see how we've done in the Premier League. We've finally started making progress with our highest finish yet. We are 8th in the league come the end of this season. 4 points off 7 plays Aston Villa and 6 points off 6 plays Chelsea. Why does Spurs keep winning the freaking Premier League? And in the bottom 3 it's West Ham, Brentford and Southampton. As you all know we won the FA Cup with Villa winning the Carabao Cup. Bayer Leverkusen won the Conference League with AC Milan winning the Europa League. Barca won the Super Cup with Man City once again winning the Champions League. Honestly I expected a lot better from the boys stats wise. 18 and 10 for Gordon, 17 and 4 for Moyes Keane, 15 and 8 for Calvert-Lewin, 11 and 10 for Dwight McNeil. I feel like that front four is so weighted in a 4-4-2. I need to figure out a way to make that into either a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. But all that aside, we won the FA Cup. We were in the top eight at the end of the season. Is this finally a turning point for Everton? Now, it's quite obvious where at least one position has to be sorted out. Tarkowski's been incredible for us from start to right now. However, he's 32 years old, 82 rated. He will start to dwindle in overall. On top of that, we do have Arnold, who's 31 years old this year. I think it would be a great idea to try to pick up a CDM as well. And due to our success last season, we've been given £86 million in order to do this. And due to the fact that we are now in a European competition, I wanted players who were experienced in said competitions. That's why I opted for centre-back Jose Maria Jimenez for just over £40 million. As well as that, I opted for Edson Alvarez for just over £35 million as well. Not before letting go of Maximilian Arnold for £18.5 million also. Boys, I have messed up big time. I completely forgot to renew people's contracts halfway through last season and we have lost so many players. And they're not exactly reserves. We have lost Gordon. We have lost Calvert Lewin. We have lost freaking Godfrey. Oh my god, it's all gone wrong. And after that massive screw up by me, the team now looks like this. I cannot bless the first time I've ever forgotten to renew people's contracts, man. We definitely are scraping the barrel when it comes to players. Now the squad depth gone from pretty good to pretty goddamn shit. I feel like we've gone two steps forward, five steps backwards. I'll say this though, it's going to make this season very interesting to see how we actually get on. And as I've already mentioned, we are in a European competition due to the fact that last season we won the FA Cup and we are in the Europa League in Group G joined by Strasbourg, FC SB and Apple FC. Now, I don't care what our team looks like, we should top this group. Boys, we've absolutely smashed Group G, only dropping two points in the entire group stage, man. I am very confident about how we can do in the Europa League this season. This time last season, we were in the bottom half of the table with a far superior team to what we've got right now. However, this season, we are currently eighth in the league. Somebody please explain how that works. And not only that, we're only a couple of places off the top six as well, so who knows what could happen by the end of this season. And to update you guys, the team looks a little bit like this. Now, don't get me wrong, I did really want to bring in some fresh talent into this side. However, due to the fact that we brought in Edson Alvarez and Jimenez at the start of the season, we couldn't financially pull it off. I did, however, want to bring in some free agents. However, the free agents I wanted to bring in would have been so unrealistic. We will have to make do with this team for now, but in fairness, we topped the Europa League group stage. We're in the top 10 of the Premier League. We're definitely holding our own, so who knows what could happen. Against all odds this season, we had made it to the Europa League final facing off against Italians Fiorentina. At the beginning of the season, any form of success seemed absolutely impossible. Right now, I'm not writing anything off. And thanks to a beautiful through ball, Dwight McNeil made it 1-0. Oh, Dwight McNeil, he's through. He's through Dwight McNeil and he makes it 1-0 to Everton. McNeil has been by a mile our best player. Everything has run through him pretty much and we finally take a one goal advantage in the final. And thanks to some incredible play by Fiorentina, they got an equaliser. Oh no, oh no, oh my god, that is a fantastic finish. Fiorentina equalised, and to be honest, that was nobody's fault. That was just an amazing goal. And with a beautiful counter-attack, Damari Gray made it 2-1. Go on, Damari Gray, Damari Gray, to finish the game, come on! Damari Gray has made it 2-1 to Everton with 10 minutes left. Oh my days, Damari Gray coming in clutch. And we've done it, boys, we've won the Europa League, holy shit! How we pulled that off with a 
four weakened team, I will never know. But it doesn't make a difference because next season we are in the Champions League. Considering the fact that at the beginning of the season we'd lost about six or seven players, three of which were in the starting 11, we have won the Europa League. That is an amazing achievement. And as captain of Everton, Pickford lifts his second trophy of the rebuild. Boys, I'm loving this. Hopefully next season we can take it to the next level and win the Champions League. But before we get to that, let's see how we've done elsewhere this season. I'm not going to lie, I don't expect much from us in the Premier League this season. However, we did finish above Arsenal, which is always a bonus. This time it was Liverpool who went on to win the Premier League. Only by two points, though, they were followed very goddamn closely by Chelsea. And in the bottom three this season, it was Burnley, Bristol City and Watford. Bloody hell, we got the double this time, boys. We won the FA Cup too. Wolves didn't do very well in finals this year, did they? Monaco won the Conference League. As you all know, we won the Europa League. Bloody hell, what a match this turned out to be. And AC Milan won the Champions League. I have to admit, maybe losing all those players was a blessing in disguise, because let's be honest, look at the stats, man. 38 and 8 for Moise Keane, 26 and 16 for Dwight Manil, who's now 90 rated, may I add. Dynamic potential is definitely back. Damari Gray even got 15 goals and 10 assists. Jesus Christ, with a Wobie gain 11 and 14. Holy shit, them pairs stepped up this season. But all that aside, halfway through last season, I massively screwed up by not renewing anybody's contracts and thankfully the players that we did have left came in clutch we won the fa cup we won the europa league we are in the champions league hopefully the board will give us a big sum of money to work with and we can get this team back to how it was looking and hopefully with that win the Champions League. Now as we start this season it's very clear where we need to improve. We need a new central attacker midfielder, we need a new winger and we need a new backup striker because we've literally only got one striker in Moise Keane. And to be fair guys I think we've been a bit shafted here. We've only been given £82 million given all of our success last season. And now that we're in the Champions League I wanted a couple of players who had been in the Champions League before so they knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. That's why I opted for Julian Brandt for our central attacker midfielder and he cost us just over 30 8 million. We did also sell Gamab in for just over 7.5 million to get rid of some deadwood on the team. Not before bringing in Domenico Berardi for just over 33 million. Which leaves the team looking like this. The only thing I couldn't do in that transfer window was afford to bring in a second striker to Moise Keane just in case he gets injured. However, I do think that Damari Gray will go in that position and he's alright anyway. But all things considered, guys, we've got a genuine shot of going all the way this season in the Champions League. And speaking of, we are in Group D of the Champions League with Barcelona, Hoffenheim and FC Copenhagen and let's be realistic here ourselves and Barcelona have got to be the favourites to go through to the round of 16. Well boys I didn't expect to go through to the round of 16 top of the group but that is exactly what we've done. It was ourselves and Barca as I predicted. We are into the round of 16 against Sporting. Come on that is a lovely fixture in the round of 16. And in the Premier League we are one place higher than we were this time last season we are 7th place in the Premier League. Hopefully by the end of the season we can finally creep into that top 6. Maybe even the top four. And just to update you guys, the team does look like this. The starting 11 looks really goddamn good. The subs bench, all things considered, looks very goddamn good. I think we're more than ready for the Champions League, especially sporty. Going into the first leg, I won't lie, I was very confident and I was right to be so as we pick up a 3-0 win. With this advantage, surely to God, we have got to make it through to at least the quarterfinals. Surely to God, that 3-0. Oh, what the? We never make it easy for ourselves, do we? In the quarterfinals, the competition definitely got leveled up as we faced off against Italian giant trimmer and we could tell the difference because we picked up a two-all draw in the first leg. It ain't looking good for us, is it? Bayrardi has picked up a suspension, meaning Gray is going to go in his place. But to be fair, Gray last season did come in clutch quite a few times. We are two-all on aggregate, away from home. Can the boys in blue pull off a massive upset? Yes, we can. 5-4 on aggregate, 3-2 overall. Brown with a bloody brace and Keane with a goal in the fourth minute gets us into the semi-finals. And in the semis, we drew against Manchester City and if we could beat these guys, we could beat anybody. And that is exactly what we did, picking up a 2-1 victory in the first leg. With a 2-1 advantage against Man City, a draw will literally put us in the Champions League final. So let's see if the boys from Everton can actually pull this one out of the bag. Oh my God, boys, we're in the Champions League final. Let's freaking go. And in the Champions League final, boys, we come up against the team that we bested to the top spot in the group stage of the competition, Barcelona. It's going to be a very difficult game. But before we get to the final, I'm actually quite curious to see how we've done in the Premier League this season. I actually give up with Everton. Why can't we get higher than eighth place? We are in the Champions League final. We have won the FA Cup. We have won the Europa League, but we can't even get in the top six of the Prem, man. Chelsea did wipe the floor with everybody, though, this season. 15 points clear top of the table by the end of the season. And this time, it was Fulham, Sheffield, 
Sheffield and Brentford who were in the bottom three. Bloody Burnley won the FA Cup beating City to do it. Bottle jobs will be bottle jobs. Royal Antwerp won the Conference League, but they see Milan win in the Europa League, and they also beat us to win the Super Cup. Moyes Keane with 27 and 11, Berardi with 15 and 5, Brent with 10 and 12 as well. It's not been a bad season at all for our front four, even though Berardi did go down to 83 rating. Moyes, it has been a journey and a half so far in this rebuild. We have picked up a Europa League trophy. We have picked up an FA Cup trophy. We are now so close to game pick for that trophy that has eluded them this entire rebuild. But the question is, can Everton actually pull it off against Barcelona? And thanks to some beautiful play, we got a 1-0 lead inside the first 15 minutes. Julian Brandt on his lap. Oh my God, what a goal. What a goal from Julian Brandt to put us 1-0 up inside the first 15 minutes of this final. And boys, Everton have finally won the Champions League in this rebuild. It came from one goal, only one goal separated us from Julian Brandt in the 12th minute of this game. But that was all that was needed to win the Champions League. But I think that is a great way to end this video. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, smash the highlight of that subscribe button. If you are new around here, turn that notification on so you never miss a video I upload. I don't know if by the time this video gets uploaded will have hit 7k but right now we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers and we are agonizingly close to achieving that goal that is all from me it's been your boy good you know you guys have an amazing afternoon and until next time i'll see you later